How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're actually going to be mixing it up from our exploded 75% grind because today we're going to be modding the Everest Max from Mountain. If you aren't familiar with the Everest Max, it's probably the best pre-built gaming keyboard on the market right now. It comes in some very nice packaging, plenty of branding, information, and specs all over it with less aggressive colors than other brands. Lift up the snazzy magnetic flap and you'll be greeted with the keyboard and its TKL layout. Underneath that you'll find the wrist rest. It's fairly soft with a pretty meh feeling-ish finish, kind of like sticky rubber almost. Not bad, but nothing to write home about. But now we can get to the coolest part of this box. All of the other parts and accessories are in this little drawer section and packaged nicely inside of their own boxes. In the customized box, they provide you with a sampler of all the available switch options. You got Cherry MX Blue, Brown, Silent Red, Speed Silver, and Red. The magnetic feet for adjusting the typing angle. These things are super strong and a lot of fun just to play with on their own, honestly. One of those switch puller keycap combo things and an extra escape key if you don't want the like silver branded artisan one. Then there's your media dock that holds all of your basic media control buttons along with a rotary encoder with a cool little screen on it you can customize. Next is the optional numpad. It has all of what you would expect to find on a numpad as well as four remappable buttons that each contain their own customizable screen as well. And finally, this big braided USB-C to USB-A cable. This cable is a chonker. He thick boy. Definitely one of the nicer cables I've seen included with any keyboard. The bottom plastic part of the case has multiple channels for you to route this any which way. The bottom of the case is made of ABS plastic. The top, however, is a low profile aluminum plate case combo. Tray mount design with an LED diffuser. My favorite part of this board though definitely has to be the modularity. On the top, you'll find two USB-C ports for placing the media dock on either side. On the side, you'll find the USB-C ports for the numpad that we talked about earlier, all on top of being a hot swap keyboard. So I have the cherry red version here. Before we dive into this thing, let's hear how it sounds stock. Definitely far from the best from an enthusiast standpoint. The stock cherry reds are scratchy. The springs are crunchy and so pingy. You can hear the ping on these things two rooms over. Some of the stabs are okay. I've definitely heard worse, but all of this is exactly what I'm gonna fix today. So let's dive into it. So I wanna take a moment to thank my coworker for letting me borrow his board. The one I had that was supposed to be delivered in early December has now been delayed until mid-January at best, but he agreed to let me upgrade this for him for free so I could get another video ready for the channel. So big shout out to him. I'm also going to take this moment to thank everyone for the unbelievable support on my Q1 video. It has done so much better than I ever expected and all of the support and feedback I got on it was just amazing. I appreciate it more than I could ever say. So thank you, thank you so much. Okay, so in classic pre-built tray mount fashion, after all the keycaps are gone, you'll be met with 
a ton of screws strewn all over the plate. I'm getting flashbacks to the GK68XS. And after all those are removed, you get to delicately unclip the plastic bottom from the top aluminum frame. To my surprise though, there are no JSD cables underneath this thing. Instead it has five, yeah, five daughter boards attached via pins and small JST adjacent headers. Really similar to like PC motherboard headers if you're familiar. And then there's this layer of foam sandwiched in between the daughter boards and the PCB. Just basic dampening foam, nothing special. This PCB is crazy too. It has all of these standoffs and headers for those daughter boards along with some like capacitors or something. It's a lot more complex than the PCBs I'm used to handling. Now, while this thing is hot swap, it's only three pin compatible. So either be careful of what you're buying or be prepared to clip legs off your fancy, possibly expensive switches. Okay, so I need all of you to do me a favor. I need everyone to go to the comments and post RIP. Because I'm about to lube and film enough switches for a full-size keyboard. Say some prayers for me. Write your eulogies because I might not survive. If you're watching this, I survived. Okay, but on a serious note, let me demonstrate the drastic sound difference of stock MX Reds compared to MX Reds lubed with 205 grade zero and filmed with Desky Switch Films. I don't know how well the mic picked it up, but the ping is gone. The scratch is gone. The switch has a much deeper and more full sound and it just feels 1000 times smoother. The next step is the stabilizers. Again, as per usual with pre-built gaming keyboards, the Everest Max only supports clip and stabs, but that's okay, we can make them work. Now I accidentally only ordered one set of cherry clip ends and only had one spare 2U lying around. So we're going to skip two of the numpad stabs for this video, but I'll fix them up later for him. Just pretend with me. So once again, I'm going to be holy modding these, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit. Instead of strips of Band-Aid, I'm going to be holy modding these with strips of electrical tape. I heard of this idea in Thick Thack Thoks stream video. I forgot who exactly thought of the idea first, so I do apologize to whoever thought of this before. But I thought it could be a really great way to get rid of the like mushiness that the Holy Mod can create before breaking it in. Otherwise, stab tuning is about the same as usual. Clip the feet, lube the housings with 205 grade zero, and apply a good amount on the wires as well. And next we're going to be tape modding this. I've never actually done this myself and I thought that it would be a really great way to make a thinner sounding board sound more full and deep. The bottom of this PCB being as crazy as it is though made this whole mod significantly more tedious than it needed to be. I ended up going with two layers of tape just to be safe because of how low a couple of the headers for the daughter boards are and I didn't want to add any unnecessary thickness to it. And with my janky tape mod finished, we can actually get to reassembling this thing. I reinstalled all five daughter boards, being extra careful not to bend any pins. I then cut up the foam from the bottom of the PCB to add this extra dampening, but you really have to be careful where you put it because of all the daughter boards and the standoffs and the raised parts of the bottom case. I then added the aluminum frame for under the LED diffuser and clipped the bottom case back into the top while just praying that I didn't snap one off. Even after cutting all the foam up, it was still a pretty tight fit. I would be really worried if you were haphazard about this. The tolerances are pretty tight and you could very easily break something. After getting the metric ton of screws back into the top, I magically installed the switches because of internet magic. I gave them a lubed and filmed Gatoron black ink on the space bar as my little treat from the enthusiast community. The very last thing to do is keycaps. This Everest Max has their ABS shine through keycaps. Really thin, already pretty shiny, OEM profile. 
They do offer PBT keycaps as an add-on when ordering, but he opted out. Normies, am I right? However, as with most pre-built boards, this is a north-facing switch. And all I have with me currently are Cherry Profile keycaps, so I won't be doing a sound test with anything other than the stock keycaps. So as you've probably already noticed, the owner of this board really likes Pokemon. And I wanted to give him an extra little thank you for letting me borrow it to make this video. The Capco, link in description, has a lot of really nice Pokemon artisans. And the moment I saw their Mewtail artisan, I knew it was perfect for this board. And with that, the build is done. This is it. This is the Mountain Everest Max. Okay, I am actually so impressed with how this turned out. Y'all were right, the tape mod is actual magic. I'm in love with this board as far as pre-built go. It ended up sounding so deep and dampened without being muted. The switches feel smooth as butter and they no longer have that god awful ping. However, let's talk about that holy mod with the electrical tape. It didn't help that mushy feeling at all. It feels no different than with band-aids, honestly, and it was kind of more difficult to install. The electrical tape, at least the brand that I got, is less adhesive than the band-aids I've used in the past. Half of them fell out of the slider's top hole before I even installed them, and one just fell out altogether. I'm definitely interested in trying other materials for the Holy Mod, but electrical tape did not win me over today. Regardless, the board sounds great, and I'm so excited to see what my coworker thinks. Thank you all so much for watching and thank you again for the support recently. If you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It really means the world to me. And I'll see you all in the next one.